This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. The very law of mankind should be total dependence upon God. I depend on Him. Until you learn how to depend on God, let me tell you something, man. That's, that's the key right now. If you're going to accomplish anything in this season, in this crazy time, you got to depend on God. You got to know your God. You got to depend on Him. You got to lean on Him. I depend on God for everything. If they run out of the food in the grocery store, I depend on God. If an angel got to come with a tray, we going to eat because I depend on God. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let the sun shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness. They had great confidence in their own, their own righteousness. That's the first problem. Shouldn't be your own righteousness. Should be his righteousness. And, they, and, and scorned everyone else. Now watch what he does. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee. The other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. Now, watch the prayer this dude pray. It's a self-righteous prayer. Watch this. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people. Golly. You just want to lay one on him, right? Just. And look how he describes other people. I am not a, ch a cheater. I'm not like other people. Cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. Check him out. Now watch this. Watch the arrogance. I fast twice a week. I ain't got no problem with you fasting, but look, look at, look at, look at the con look at what you're doing here. And I give you a tenth of all my income. He's building himself up like, you know, I give a tenth of all my income. Hallelujah. And I fast. Hallelujah. What's this? But the tax collector stood at a distance. He should have cause lightning was about to hit. <laughs> but the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven. And he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow saying, Oh God, be merciful. Merciful. Mercy is the bad you deserve you don't get. That's right. Be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. I tell you this sinner, not the Pharisee, return home justified before God because he exalted himself instead of allowing God to exalt him. That's self-righteousness. That's not what we want. That's not what we want. We don't want self-righteousness. And religion operates the same way. Religion operates through guilt and fear. You come to church and, and, and how do, you're not supposed to come to church and get shame. No. You're not supposed to come to church and get a double, double dose of guilt. You're not supposed to come to church and get, a, and get condemned. 
I mean, some people come to church, they know they're going to hell. You ain't got to tell them. <laughs> they already know, and they feel sh uh, full of shame. They feel full of guilt. But they're not supposed to come to church and get more of it. Boy, I tell you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Us to be ashamed of yourself. You know, God don't like ugly. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, you don't start coming to church on a regular basis, you're going to be in hell by 12 o'clock tomorrow, I guarantee you. <laughs> don't nobody want to hear that? I'm here because I know I got symptoms. Tell me something I don't know. Telling me I'm a no good for nothing sinner on my way to hell. There's some people who, that's why they, I'm here. I'm trying not to go there. Show me something. Tell me something. But somehow religion says, no, 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 no. No, I'm going to make you feel guilty. I'm going to put a bunch of fear on you. I'm going to put a bunch of shame on you. I'm going to make you feel inferior. And somehow, if I keep doing that, I think that's going to keep keep you coming back. It, it, I wanted, I, I, this, developing a guilt and a fear consciousness, developing a sin consciousness and using that to hope that you can come back. And it's like that, 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 that drug pusher, you know, dependency on guilt is what keeps religion alive. Dependency on guilt is what keeps religion well. And that, dr that drug dealer gives you just a little taste of drugs just to keep you coming back. Well, I tell you, once you become the righteousness of God because of what Jesus has done, those days will be over with forever because I am not righteous because of my performance. I am not righteous because of what I do or don't do. I am righteous because I made my mind up to believe in a Savior. I made my mind up to believe in a Jesus, and I have been made righteous because of what Jesus has done. I am the righteousness of God. Now, here's what I want to talk about today. <laughs> I want you to think about this. I'm going to say this a couple of times. I want you to think about it. Now, do I humble myself by what I do? Or do I humble myself because of who I am in Christ? Let me say that again. Do I humble myself by what I do, or do I humble myself because of who I am in Christ? Because I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. I, I, I want to humble myself based on who I am in Christ. I don't want to humble myself based on what I do because the day you believe you're righteous, you're going to start doing righteous. Amen. 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 Now your identity is determining your behavior instead of your behavior determine your identity. Oh, I did something wrong, so I must be a bad person. Versus, watch this, I did something wrong. Watch this, watch this. It's going to crinkle with your religion. I did something wrong but I'm still the righteousness of God. That's what's going to straighten that behavior out. You're not going to straighten the behavior out by allowing I did something wrong and condemnation comes and shame comes and now you, that's trying to reshape your identity. No, you got to stick with your identity. I did something wrong. I'm still the righteousness of God. How can you say that? Jesus, you're still righteous? Yes! I'm still the righteousness of God. <laughs> That's the thing I need to tell y'all. Born again people have issues. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you, what do you, you think you got born again and you got born again and flawless at the point? If that could happen, Jesus completely wasted his time, his body, and his blood dying on the cross. God helps those who help themselves. No, God helps those who need help.
Somebody told me, they said, like the Bible said, God helps those who help themselves. And I looked it up and I said, Benjamin Franklin said that. <laughs> God helps those who, who need help. Yes. And you know what? I need help. Yes. I need help every day of my life. Yes, it's never going to be a day where I don't need help. So I already put it in my prayer every day. Lord, I need you today. There's a powerful thing that happens in the arena of your behavior when you can understand that it is your identity that determines your behavior and it should not be your behavior that determines your identity. Because what happens if it's your behavior and you let it mess with your identity, then you're just going to continue to misbehave and then you're going to try to fix it in the behavior realm. And that's an identity issue. Everything Satan had ever done started with attacking the identity first. And he's still trying to attack your identity in righteousness, and you cannot let that happen. I'm telling you, if you're going through hell or high water, you got to know I am the righteousness of God. You're being attacked. I am the righteousness of God. Amen. You, you would be surprised the number of condemned guilty people that come to church every Sunday. And I pray, Lord, help me to say something to let them know that you have not quit on them. You will never quit on them. You got their back. Let them understand that they are the righteousness of God. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, just do this for me. Humor me. Would you say I'm the righteousness of God two times? Say it. And keep and keep confessing that until you believe it. Especially when you feel that the enemy is surrounding you with condemnation and shame. Shame is everywhere. The world has perfected shaming people, trying to shame people out of what they believe, trying to shame people out of what they've done. They want to define you by your one bad day. And you can't let that happen. This is our time, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. This season that's coming up, we're in it right now. The return of the Lord is at hand. God is about to show out in you. And I'm ready because I know I need him. Amen. Now, let's look at these scriptures here. Let's, let's, let's get rocking and rolling here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. Let's look at it in the King James and then the NLT. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, and the King James and the NLT. Verse 8 says, For God, for, excuse me, for by grace are you saved. You're saved by grace. Grace made it available. You're saved by grace. Salvation from grace. Salvation because of Jesus. For by grace are you saved, but how did you get it? Through faith. Faith takes possession of what grace has made available. All right. For by grace are you saved through faith. And notice, and that is not of yourself. It is the what? The gift of God. So if it's the gift of God, he said, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. When it's a gift, he gets the credit. If it's by work, you get the credit. All right, look at this in the uh, New Living Translation. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. Amen. You can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Jesus gets the credit. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. <laughs> so none of us can boast about it. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, it absolutely was not because of the good things I have done. But what is that thing on the inside of some human beings that really strive to want to be important? That's pride. Working real hard to be important. 
How many names can I drop so you can know I'm important? <laughs> yeah, working real hard to try to be important. Uh, I don't want to do that. I know Jesus, he knows me. We good. I, you can't do nothing for me when I got Jesus. That's, 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 that's the thing Abraham saw when, he, when Melchizedek told him, you know, here is the possessor of heaven and earth. And Abraham like, what? The possessor of heaven and earth want to have something to do with me? Well, I don't need nothing this world got to offer because I got the possessor of heaven and earth. And it's the same thing with us. He gave us his son. He'll give us everything we need. Why? He gave us his son. So what you ought to do is, I am important to God. And that's about all that matters, right? And so these good things we have done. No, you're not getting something because of the good things you have done. I, I, gotta, I gotta get you out of, out of the way so that you can see the greatness of God showing up in your life, doing some amazing things. Let's look at Titus chapter three, verse five. King James and then NLT. Titus chapter three, verse five. King James and NLT. Woo! We believe God, man. We believe God. He is my source. He is my supply house. He is everything I'll ever need. I trust him. I rely on him. Every day I wake up, I'm relying on him, praise God. I'm depending on him. I'm declaring my dependence on him. You know, I believe that that's a thread that goes through the Bible. I really, really do. Just, just check this out just for a moment. Don't, I'll be right here. But I, I really believe, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the Bible. I'm searching. I believe this whole thing is about independence from God versus dependence. Start off in, 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 start off in, in, with Lucifer in heaven. What was that about? That was about Lucifer convincing a third of the angels to declare their independence from God. They were simply saying, we don't need you. Then we go down to the Garden of Eden and Lucifer shows up, Satan shows up in the Garden of Eden, lying, trying to set them up and saying, saying to them very simply, you eat the fruit of that tree, you are gonna be just like God. You don't need him. And they declared their independence when they responded and ate the fruit of the tree. Man became a rebel, declaring he doesn't need God. Now that's crazy because everything God created knows that they need God. The sun and the rotation of the earth knows it needs God. The vegetable kingdom, no, it needs God. The animal kingdom, no, it needs God. The fish, no, they need God. Birds of there, no, they need God. And man absolutely thought to himself, I don't need God. I don't need God. He says, we need to fix that. So I'm gonna put them in a situation. And in that situation, I'm gonna give them a whole bunch of rules and regulations and say, all right, you don't need me. Go ahead, Bubba. Let's see if you can keep 613 of these, babies. Go on, see. Show me what you got. Come on. They felt miserably. And Jesus shows up. <laughs> and he does things for you out of his grace, out of his unrestrained love. He does things you didn't earn, you didn't ask for, and you don't deserve. Because finally, salvation is for people who now know I need a savior. I need a savior. I need a savior. How many of you ever been, a di been in a ditch, had no idea how you got in that ditch, but it helped you to recognize, I need a savior. I need a savior. I need a savior. Watch this now, Titus chapter three and five. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Look at this in the NLT. Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him, how he works. He loves us, man. I depend on him. The very law of mankind should be total dependence upon God. I depend on him. 
until you learn how to depend on God, let me tell you something, man. That's, that's the key right now. If you're going to accomplish anything in this season, in this crazy time, you got to depend on God. You got to know your God. You got to depend on him. You got to lean on him. I depend on God for everything. If they run out of the food in the grocery store, I depend on God. If an angel got to come with a tray, we going to eat because I depend on God. And I declare my dependence on God. He said, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done. He saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. My goodness. Look at Philippians chapter 3. Verses 3 through 9 in the NLT. Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 9 in the NLT. God oh, preaches why we're going so much. I, I, I love opening the Bible up. I, I love looking at it and, and checking it out. And then and, 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 and I just, oh, I just love it. You know, some preachers think that they, they know everything. You, you just know some, and another one know another one, and another one know another. So hush your mouth. You don't know it all. I got some stuff I, I believe 20 years ago and it's changed now. I want to keep growing. I don't want to get stuck in one place. I want to keep going. I mean, what I knew five years ago, show me something else, God. I want to see, I, I want to know how deep he is and how high he is and how wide he is. And I ain't nowhere near that deep. I ain't nowhere near that high, that wide. But I do know that not one man has it all. So I pause a whole lot of times. I hear somebody say something and I'm thinking, and then I think, well, hold on a minute. Let me just go and hold that thing for a moment, boy, because I might not understand enough to be able to, to even disagree or to comment. Some people don't know enough to make no commentary. Some, they need to go shut up and commentary yourself at home. 
be quiet for a minute, you know, because you're now living a life that maybe you didn't think it was possible for you to live. And you're believing in faith and understanding the faith of Jesus Christ like never before. And you're seeing some amazing things happen in your life. And before, you might have been a member of another denomination thinking that them people down at that convention, there's something wrong with them. And now look at them. They're talking about you now. Something wrong with you because you're one of them people down in that convention. Welcome. <laughs> All right, watch this, verse 3. For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. That's interesting. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. I rely and depend on the finished works of Jesus. I rely and depend on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. This is strong. Though I could have, Paul said, now, now check this out, Paul was saying, I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could. And then he starts giving you his, 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 his profile. Indeed, if others have reasons for confidence uh, in their own efforts, I have even more. Now watch him. He said, I was circumcised when I was eight years old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel. I'm a member of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish laws. I was so zealous that I harshly, I harshly persecuted the church. He did all that persecution because he was zealous about the law that he lived under. He said, and as for righteousness, man, I obeyed the law without fault. Sounds a little self-righteous, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain what? Christ. 